Hey, what's going on you guys? This is Chad. Today I wanted to talk about the brand new Apple MacBook Air. This has the M1 processor. My first impressions after using it for a week. I've never bought into the whole Air lineup just for a couple reasons we'll talk about today, but this has completely changed my mind. I would actually recommend this laptop over the MacBook Pro 13, and in a lot of use case scenarios, I would recommend this over the MacBook Pro 15 or 16. So we're gonna talk about that right now. First couple of things is the display. So they've changed the display on this unit as a higher resolution. If you remember, the old Airs had like a 720p really matte looking display it wasn't that professional looking it got great battery life and that's why a lot of people chose to get it uh, also of course this is a budget friendly laptop at $9.99 but the first thing that was glaring to me that why I never used the Air was just the display itself this one has a fantastic display this one is using the Pro display, now this does get 400 nits of brightness where the Pro gets 500, but for me it gets plenty bright. You can see that um, even in my harsh studio lighting, you can still see the display on here. Uh, some of the other things that's nice about that is the bezel is a lot smaller, so it doesn't have the super fat, chunky chin and forehead on the display, so they've narrowed the bezels on it. Also, it just looks and feels more like the Pro model. If you had this sitting side by side, the Air versus the Pro, the brand new versions, you really could not tell the difference just because the quality is so much better now on the Air model. Also, for the first time, this has true tone display. So depending on the lighting in your room, it will change the colors uh, of the system to kind of match what the lighting is which is really neat and you've seen that with the iPhones and then the iPads and now even on their lowest budget model on the Air unit. So this is the base model. This is just $9.99. I actually found it open box for $9.39, which is fantastic because the system just came out. I'll leave a link down below where you can get the best prices and sometimes uh, a, a great buy for an open box so make sure you check the link in the description for more information on that so the new base model is just 9.99 comes with 256 gigs of uh, storage plus 8 gigs of ram something different too because this is using that m1 processor this is allowing you to use the 8 gigs of ram and the internal storage so this runs more like 16 gigs of ram on a standard laptop so a big question everybody keeps asking is should you get the eight gig model? Should you upgrade to the 16 gig model? I would say if you have the money, you can go ahead and spend it on the 16, but I would recommend you get the eight gig model if you're doing just basic video editing, basic photo uh, editing, you know, your emails, surfing the web, things like that. And starting today, I'm gonna be using this to edit 4K video. So if you'd like to see the whole video editing processing, what it looks like and how it runs on this MacBook, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll get that out for you guys. So I think this is gonna handle all of your day-to-day -day needs. If you're gonna do super heavy lifting, if you're going to be you know, doing 8K video, 6K video, um, but you're doing it all day long, it would be more advantageous for you to either get the MacBook Pro 13 just because of the cooling situation, it will run a little bit cooler. You won't get any thermal throttling. It will just run like a beast. Um, and that brings me to another point. This has no fans in it. It's always quiet. I haven't had it get hot at any point. Usually even just opening uh, Chrome and having a bunch of tabs open, your laptop will get really, ha uh, really hot because Chrome is, believe it or not, really CPU intensive and a memory hog, and it will heat your system up. On this eight gig model, I've had 15 tabs open at one time, and these are heavy tabs, stocks and trading apps and things. This laptop doesn't even get warm to the touch on the bottom. So thermal throttling, at least for my use case scenario, there's been no issue with this system. So that brings me to the next point is the build quality. If you've ever owned a MacBook, you know that these things are built like a tank. Same thing here. Everything on this MacBook is built. It's premium. The keyboard is really nice. This has the new clicky uh, keys on it. it. has a large trackpad. It's not as large as the MacBook Pro 13's trackpad, but it's plenty big enough. I'll show you here. The one thing that the Air does not have 
and the pros do is this does not have the touch bar on it. So if you're a big fan of the touch bar, you're not going to get that. On this one, you're just going to get the function keys, but they did change them a little bit this year. You can see here on the F5 key, this is actually now for dictation, where before you used to have to go into your settings, turn on dictation, which I would usually map to double tap on, you know, command or function key, and then it would open up my dictation. So this one now on F5 is a dictation key and your F6 key is a do not disturb. So if you just don't want anything dinging and going off and all that other jazz while you're working or FaceTiming, you can hit that. Also on the bottom left-hand corner on the function key, now you can see the globe. If you hit the globe, it automatically opens up your emoji keyboard so you can just start uh, typing in fast emojis. Other than that, the keyboard layout is the same. You still have your fingerprint sensor and your on off or standby button here in the top right corner. The speakers sound good on this system. They're nice, they're full, they're loud. I'll do another video where I'm just testing the speakers and maybe I'll compare that to the iPad Pro 12.9, which is another device that I'm using. If you guys are interested in a head-to-head -head comparison between the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro 12.9, let me know down in the comments. I'll also make a video for that if you guys are interested. Just to see use case scenarios, what you would like to use. Um, I'm just thinking of ideas that maybe might help you guys, maybe editing with LumaFusion versus Final Cut Pro, or how does DaVinci Resolve 17 Studio run on this versus you know Premiere Pro. Just different ideas. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave it down in the comment section and I'll make sure to answer all those for you. So the keyboard and the trackpad are excellent on this system. It has a nice clicky feel, of course, on the keys. I, we don't have any more of the butterfly switches, so you don't have to worry about dust or anything getting in, inside of the membranes under the keys and causing you big major issues. So thankfully, Apple has listened to us and they stopped making it after three generations. So that's good. One of the advantages too, speaking of build quality of the MacBook 13 is the fact that it has is this tapered down edge that the pros don't have. So when you are typing and putting your wrists onto the side panel here next to the trackpad, let me show you, it's a little bit easier to use just because it's, it's closer to you and it doesn't dig into your wrists. You'll notice on the MacBook Pro 13 and the 15s and 16s, they're thicker. So what happens is, is when you're using your laptops all day, um, that thickness starts to dig into your wrist just a little bit and anybody who's used the laptops for a long period of time students and teachers and professionals you'll know that you start to get that dug into your your wrist you don't get that here with the macbook air so if you type for long periods of time uh, letters and documents and emails just for that reason alone this might be a good purchase for you and speaking of typing all day long the battery life on this is probably the best battery life I've ever had on any system. Now, other people are saying that the MacBook Pro 13 with the M1 chip is getting them 12 to 14 hours of real world usage. On this laptop, I'm finding right now just after a week's worth of use with tons of my uh, toolbars running, you know, applications that are always running in the background, I seem to be getting around 11 or 12 hours pretty consistently. And on the old MacBook Air and the old MacBook Pro 13s, 15s, and 16s, just light usage, I was getting around seven to nine hours typically. So you are getting more than one day's full battery use. Plus the standby time on this is incredible. One of the main reasons actually this year that I switched from a laptop to the iPad was one, the performance was better. Um, just for doing really quick, simple things because it was faster, because it was Apple's chip, which we'll talk about here in a minute what you can also do on this. And two is the battery life. So I never had to worry about my battery life on the iPad Pro 12 and 11 Pro. I was getting around 8 to 10 hours of battery life, which was a little bit longer than my laptops. So it made more sense for me to always make sure that I had my iPad with me versus a laptop because the battery was longer. So that also brings me back to some of the things you can do on this that you couldn't do before. One of them is you can run your mobile apps on this. You could never do this before on any MacBooks. 
So this allows me to run any of my mobile apps. So for example, Blink, which is my security camera system, I have of course on my phones and my tablets, on my Amazon Echoes, and now I can have it on my MacBook. I literally just sideloaded it from my phone to my laptop, and now I'm running my Blink camera system. So anytime a, a camera system is detected or any movement or motion, it lights up on my laptop where before I had to have my phone or my iPad with me to do that. So you can use mobile apps and even the ones that aren't designed for it yet. If you're curious on how to do that, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to do a separate video just for that because you can uh, install any app that's on your phone onto your laptop and it runs perfectly. Another great example of that is if you may or may not know is Instagram does not run natively ever on a laptop. You have to use Chrome, but then you can't import pictures. You can't use video. You can't actually do anything with it, but look and like on pictures. But because I can install the app uh, Instagram side loaded from my phone, I can actually run Instagram, TikTok, anything that you want from your phone will now run on your laptop. So to wrap this up, I think right now, at least with my first impressions after using this for a week is this is worth every penny. If you can find an open box or a used model, I say go ahead and do that. If you're wondering if you should get the eight gigs versus the 16, I would recommend you go with the eight gigs. You can always return it. I think the eight gigs of RAM is gonna be more than enough. But again, your use case might be different. Try it out and see what you think. For me, for $999, I don't think this laptop can be beat. I've had a lot of great laptops in the past, but I think this one, for the price, the performance, the speed, this now actually has a large enough hard drive right out of the box with 256 gigs. You don't have to worry about it being full too fast. You know, things like AirDrop, iMessage, FaceTime, Apple's ecosystem, uh, being able to use mobile apps on your laptop. I think this laptop is a game changer. I'd highly recommend it. I will have more videos on this. Um, if you guys would, do me a favor. Click that thumbs up and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, and it does help the channel. Um, I hope you guys stay safe. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.